Let's work some problems. All right, our first problem is on constructive interference. This is a review of things we learned in the wave section. Two speakers are initially right next to each other on a table. They are both powered by the same sine wave generator oscillating, oscillating at 200 hertz. I bet that's going to be important. Let's remember 200 hertz. I pick one up and start walking away. The sound level I hear drops down, comes back up again, and then drops down to a minimum, and then I stop. How far have I walked? Okay, so what's happening here is constructive interference. When I first pick up the speaker, both speakers are right next to me, and they're adding together in phase. They're adding together constructively, and I hear a loud sound. But then we hear, as we walk away, the sound drops down, and when it hits the minimum, that's when we have perfect destructive interference, comes back up again. All right, at this point, I've walked how far? So for destructive interference, I've walked a half a wavelength. Once I've walked one wavelength away, the sound level comes back up again. I get constructive interference, and then I keep walking, and it drops again. So that means I've gone another half wavelength. So how far have I walked? Well three halves of a wavelength, right? So I hit a minimum, another maximum, and then drops to a minimum again, and then I stop. So I've gone three halves of a wavelength. All right, so how far is three halves of a wavelength? Well, once again, okay, so the distance is three halves of a wavelength. I just need to know what the wavelength is. But remember, um, in physics, there's lots and lots of equations you can memorize, but the thing I love about physics is I don't have to memorize them. I just have to understand a few basic principles, and then everything falls out of that. There's not a lot of memorization in physics. Is physics spelled with an F or with a P? I don't know. I don't remember. But I can go to Newton's second law. Boom. There it is. P. All right. So let's do that. So the speed of a wave, it travels one wavelength per period, and I know 1 over a period is frequency, so there we go, frequency. Ah, so I just solve this, and remember, wavelength is the speed of sound divided by the frequency. Now, I didn't give the speed of sound, so we'll assume it's 343 meters per second, and we divide that by the frequency, which was 200 hertz, and of course, hertz are inverse section. Sec and now I get something that's units of meters, right? 343 over 200. And I want 3 halves of that. That's an x right there. So the distance I traveled is 3 halves times lambda, which is 343 meters divided by 200. And I'll let you plug that into the calculator yourself. All right. Our other problem today is on interference patterns. So imagine I make two tiny pinholes a distance of 10 microns apart in a piece of aluminum foil. Then I shine a laser onto the foil and look at the interference pattern on a wall three meters from the foil. I find that the bright fringes in the pattern are 19.4 centimeters apart. What is the wavelength of the laser? Okay, this is a totally realistic thing to do. It may sound absurd, but people do things like this to measure wavelengths of lasers, all right? Now it turns out just two holes are not what we usually use. We usually some, use something called a diffraction grating we'll talk about later. But the idea of using an interference pattern to measure the wavelength of a laser, that's totally legit. That's something we do, all right? It's something astronomers do to figure out what, you know, colors are being emitted by stars and figure out what elements are in the stars and so forth, all right? So what are we doing here? So the basic idea of this problem is I've got these two holes. I shine my laser through these two holes, and I get waves coming out from both of these holes, and they interfere, all right? Now right along the middle, if I start right here at the middle, they both add in phase. So if I look at a point on my wall, I'll get a bright spot there. Then if I go off at some angle, right, and see up here, let's imagine they get out of phase, but then this point right here is the point where this wave travels one wavelength less than that one here, and they get back into phase again. So here's my m equals one, or m equals zero bright spot, and here's my m equals one bright spot. And then we said, okay, what's the equation that tells us where the bright spots are? I don't have to remember this because I know physics. And I just say, well, in the limit is the screen's really, really far away, which compared to the spacing, and I'm comparing a screen which is three meters away versus 10 microns apart. So I can pretend like these two lines are pretty much parallel. That's a really good approximation. 
So I draw a line right here and you see this itty bitty triangle. I didn't draw it very big, but there's an itty bitty triangle and the difference in path lengths right there, delta S, if the spacing between these two is D, this turns out to be D times sine of theta, where theta is this angle right here, how far I've gone up on the wall. All right, so there's theta, D sine theta. And to get constructive interference, I want that to be an integer number of wavelengths, right? And so there's my formula, here's my formula that tells me when I get constructive interference, all right? And what I'm trying to find is lambda. Um, so to find lambda, I just need to find the angles of two different, two different maxima and find the difference between them, right? Well, I know g I get one maxima at theta equals zero, and then the next one is a distance, uh, what should we call this, y from that first one, all right? And we found y, so the distance between the two is 10, so this is 10 microns here, so d is equal to 10 microns, also known as micrometers, a millionth of a meter, all right? Um, the wall's three meters away, and then 19.4 centimeters, so this is three meters here, the distance to the wall, and y is equal to 19.4 centimeters, all right? That's how far apart my fringes are. So I'll get one fringe at theta equals zero, all right? That's the m equals zero fringe, and the next one is up here at some angle theta, all right? Uh, yeah, so what's, so theta for my m equals zero fringe is zero. Theta for my m equals one fringe, what's that gonna equal? Well, it's gonna be the arc tangent of this distance, which is y, divided by this distance, which is l, all right? Now, because y is so small compared to l, Maybe we can get away with a small angle approximation. But hey, maybe not, we've got our calculator. Let's just leave it like that for now. All right, <clears throat> and then we say, well, what is lambda? Well, if I evaluate this at m equals one, all right, basically, yeah, if I, I know that distance right there, right? So lambda for m equals one is equal to d sine theta for m equals one, right? And, well, I know d, right? And theta for m equals one is just the arc tangent of y over l. So I just plug that all in here. d is 10 microns times the sine of the arc tangent of y is 19.4 centimeters and l is three meters, which is 300 centimeters, and the units cancel out, so there are no units there. All right, let's pull up Python. Let's actually plug in numbers for this one. If you don't want to stick around for numbers, you can end now. This is the last example, but just so you don't accuse me of whipping out, we'll actually plug this in. So here's 10 microns times the sine of, oh, I need to include math. Pull in my math functions. Okay, 10 microns. So. My only units here are microns, so I'm gonna get my answer in microns, all right? 10 times the sine of the arc, tang arc tangent of 19.4 divided by 300, and it tells me 0.645, or 6.4, so that's 6.45 microns, or 6 point, 0.645 microns, or 0.645 times 10 to the minus six. If I move it over three, then I get 645 times 10 to the minus ninth, or 645 times 10 to the minus ninth meters, or 645 nanometers. All right, it turns out that that is red. That's a, not an unusual color for a red laser pointer. All right, and that's it. Thanks for coming. Hope you had a good time.